Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, dear colleagues. It's really a pleasure for myself to welcome you here in my capacity as the executive director of this brand new young institute. I'm extremely happy that the state secretary is with us, one of those following our activities very closely. And especially I'm happy that Ernst Rietzel is with us, a senior scientist well known in Germany and beyond. He was one of those in the German scientific family on the occasion of the, what they called in those days the climate summit after the publication of the fourth assessment report of IPCC. And one of the results of this summit delivered by Ernst Rietzel, but also by John Schellenhuber, to mention a second, or by uh, Reinhard Rich, uh, Oetl, was what we need is a new institute for advanced sustainability studies. You may ask why the devil do they need a new institute? And by the way, even in Potsdam. We are gathering in Berlin, but we are headquartered in Potsdam. Only half an hour drive sometimes, from here to Potsdam. Not a long way, only to cross a bridge, a very historic bridge, by the way, because Potsdam is well known for all the investments in science and technology, especially also on the climate agenda. John Schellenhuber, he will be with us this afternoon, well known as one of the icons of climate science. And a turtle as well, also headquartered in Potsdam. And now this teeny weeny start some four years ago for this new institute. What was the guiding idea of those fathers of our institutes I mentioned? The guiding idea was that there should be a question whether the old linear relation between science, between civil society and policy can be also guiding us in the future. We always learned, and you see, I'm an old man, so I grew up with this in universities, that science is delivering results, scientifically based results, that civil society is echoing positively, and that those results are accepted by politics and have to be implemented there. I think this time is gone. The time is indeed not any longer linear. And therefore, the request to our institute is what may be the perspective for the future, how to integrate it. What is the scientific agenda in a time of a knowledge democracy. How to integrate civil society in the developing process of science and not only to ask for the results of the science and then try to convince the broader public that they have to accept it and the politics to implement it. A very, very challenging topic. And therefore, it was, I believe, a good decision to have not only as important and highly praised we have national scientists in our institute. And you know, we are a young institute, and therefore we have also, at least until now, one very young uh, scientific director. I'm extremely happy that we could convince Mark to be with us, and congratulations to organizing this conference already in the very beginning. No doubt, it was clear not only national scientists, but how to link it with the political agenda, with policy science. And I want to give you a little, having in mind that I have 10 minutes to speak, and that is always difficult. You know, I was a former minister, and if you give a minister a mic microphone, he never starts speaking. But I will do my very best to come to an end without any doubt. I will give you an example from this political science. Some, uh, only a, a short time ago, a short time ago, the political scientist Herfried Münkler from the Humboldt University in Berlin, 
quite a well-known political scientist in Germany. He published an article in the highly relevant German weekly news magazine, The Spiegel, with the title, The Foreseeable End of Parliamentarian Democracy. The Foreseeable End of Parliamentarian Democracy. I don't want to go in his full argumentation line. I want to summarize the argumentation in short. And this is the global economic architecture, the stock exchanges, grey bankings, rating agencies, the hedge funds and the, and the like are dominating, are responsible for the speed of real-time decisions. In this way, they are not only dominating the economy, but by that also civil society altogether. They are the reason for the remain no time to discuss perspectives in Parliament. And the decision decided there are not any longer discussed in detail in the Parliament because the real time decision need brings it to an alternative, with, to a situation where you have no alternatives at all. And this is in the way that parliamentarian democracy runs empty, something very close to what, for example, Ulrich Beck mentioned in his so-called second modernity. Already years ago, the then foreign minister of Germany, Joschka Fischer, mentioned, and I quote, nobody has the power to make politics against the markets. To say it bluntly, against the markets, God themselves struggle in vain. There is no chance for alternatives any longer. This is his argumentation. Needless to say, that there is quite a lot of arguments against this argumentation. Only recently for the Germans, an article by the cultural sociologist Thomas Wagner made it very clear what are the alternatives. So with the question, what are you dancing, right hand or left hand? Do you have to change the markets to be in line with democracy, or do you have to change democracy to be in line with markets? A very sensitive question. And you can come to the conclusion, the way we are handling is quite now, the financial analysts and anonymous persons behind the markets are guiding society through the world of economic and financial dominance financial and economic engineering. You may be a little bit puzzled that I mention this, but you can have the same argumentation if you read once more this famous article of Paul Kruz in Nature in 2002. A daunting task lies ahead for scientists and engineers to guide society towards environmentally sustainable management during the area of the Anthropocene. This will require appropriate human behavior at all scales and may well involve internationally accepted large-scale geoengineering projects, for instance, to optimize climate. At this stage, 2002, however, we are still largely treating on terra incognita. We are treating on terra incognita in the financial architecture as well. And we have to ask today, and therefore this conference is so important, are we still in terra incognita? And if yes, should it be our target to change this? Shall we do it? What are the reasons to do it? And if no, that it is not any longer terra incognita, what are the instruments on the table? What are the consequences? Is that going in the same direction that there is a paradigm shift that we have a past dependency to the consequences of our decision in the past? This makes this a topic for an institute for advanced sustainability studies. And therefore, I was very, very, very glad and convinced that it's the best what you can have. A young professor being consequently asking this question. And to do it not only in the isolation of natural science, but to interrelate it in a transdisciplinary way. Therefore, in this conference program, ethics, 
is not only mentioned because it is politically correct to mention this as well, but it is in the center of our obligation coming from the fathers responsible for this institute. I want to use this possibility to mention a little bit the background of our institute. I know that I will have another chance to enter in the discussion at the very end. Friday, nay, Thursday evening. So I'm a little bit afraid that the one or the other is still on his way home, and therefore I had to misuse my welcoming words as well. So it would be not too critical. Altogether, it is wonderful to have started this process, and I'm very sure that this is also necessary, especially in Germany. We must have the clear view what's going on in this important field, not as a situation where we have no alternative, but to ask whether this is an additional alternative to the must we have to do already now. It is climate policy, but much, much more. It is the Anthropocene and the question, what is sustainable development in the Anthropocene? This is our task to do. Welcome and have a good time. <laughs>